It's no secret that building a house is expensive, and one of the most costly parts is the labor. What if, though, we could use technology to automate and make this process cheaper? That's exactly what Icon is doing with their 3D printed homes. They've figured out how to 3D print concrete walls and have already constructed a number of homes this way. Today, we're gonna to take a look at their latest and greatest luxury 3D printed house called House Zero. Uh, my name is Dimitri Julius. I'm the chief people officer at Icon. Um, and what you're looking at is House Zero, the first in our exploration series of homes. Uh, this is a about 2,700 square foot house when you think about the 2,200 square foot main house and then the 350 square foot back house. We wanted to showcase what was truly possible with 3D printing um, and just at the edge of possible. And I think we've pushed all the limits here. You're probably wondering how this works and what exactly gets 3D printed. The 3D printer is shipped out and can be assembled by four people in an hour. Once assembled, it is able to lay layers of concrete to form walls that would typically take a whole crew of people to build. While someone does need to monitor the build, it's significantly less manual labor for this step of the home building process. The thing is right now you can only really 3D print these walls, so you still need to pay for the labor of electrical, plumbing, cabinetry, and things like that. But this is a great first step in automating the home building process. Icon has already printed seven affordable small homes for the chronically homeless in Austin, and 10 more in Mexico for families that did not have safe housing in the area. By automating building of the walls, they were able to build these homes much cheaper and faster than a traditional house and in my opinion they look much better than most low-income housing for example this is the tiny house village in la that was constructed for the chronically homeless and while it's better than nothing it feels more like a shelter like they kind of resemble more of a shed than a house and these are the ones that icon printed for the chronically homeless in austin that just look much more like an actual home you would want to live in and then they also built a neighborhood of four luxury townhouses in austin where where the first floor has concrete walls. All of these have already sold and now have people living in them. Now let's take a look inside House Zero, their latest luxury 3D printed house. So I think the first thing you're gonna notice actually before we even hit the door is there's not a single straight line along this entire linear run. We really wanted to use curvature um, and really have this architecture meet nature and head straight on in. It's, so we're gonna head on to the right and I'm gonna take you into one of the main bedrooms. So going down this hallway, you will notice a lot of cabinetry. Underneath is that cement wall, but it's cool that you can add wood paneling, tile, plaster, really anything you'd like over it. Here's a look at the first bedroom of this house. It always gets asked, well, what if I want to put artwork on the wall? How does that work? Um, right. So it performs just like masonry. This is our proprietary lava creek material. And you can just go get a tap screw um, from Home Depot uh, and just plug that right on up in the wall. And so we've showcased that with art pieces kind of hung throughout. So right. very easy to do, not necessarily an issue. Yeah, that. so you can still mount a TV, do all that. Another thing that we wanted to make sure that we created was an option for maybe some optionality later on down the road. And so we chose this beautiful uh, Douglas fir here on the interior of the wall. So if you decided mm, 10 years from now you wanted to remodel, you absolutely have the options to do that as well right. because those 3D printed wall segments are going to be standing for quite some time. Over here, they've got a Jack and Jill bathroom with partial exposed concrete, but some of it is plastered over and the shower is tiled over. So you see the concrete as kind of a design element, but it's also very functional. This is, uh, yeah, this interior wall is a 3D printed piece that we just yes. put some plaster and a, and a rough trowel over to really showcase that there's different ways that you could finish this out. So all the traditional construction methods are still available to you. If you wanted to plaster, stucco, paint, or put siding over the house, you could absolutely do that. That mm -hmm. would hurt our feelings, but you could do it for sure. Yeah, and so this is our office space. Um, again, if, if COVID has taught us nothing, uh, it's uh, that we really need to be thinking intuitively about how we utilize our spaces. And so this is fantastic for taking Zoom calls. Maybe it's a little office. So again, here they left a bit of exposed concrete, but they did mostly wood paneled walls in this room, which definitely feels more familiar to a traditional house. That's nice. So, I mean, it could be like a three bedroom house, but it's two mainly. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So you can, this is a flex space. You can utilize this however you want. Um, give, pop a little nice bed in here and then you've got you know a nice additional space for for guests and now heading into my favorite area which is the living room for maybe some of the viewers out there they might not know but um, concrete itself is very thermally dense and what that actually means is like uh, it holds 
its own heat and temperature very well. So on like a 95 degree day in Texas with no central air on, um, it's gonna be about 75 degrees in this house with no air conditioning needed Whoa. whatsoever. I had no idea that yeah. it could actually do that. The living room has a really cool feature that you can see from the outside. They have these three curved walls. They're really taking advantage of the fact that they can print things however they want with this. So I really love this space because it kind of creates one open concept that I think we're all used to having. And so I like to chit chat. I like to hold court. And while I'm cooking, I would like to be able to, you know, have friends or family at the dining room area. Also, there's some really unique moments where we didn't necessarily add additional space to the house where we just thought about the active space and used it. So you've got, you know, your little dining room area specifically. We've got a nice little cozy reading nook over here. There's an opportunity here to kind of have this office space that really doesn't feel like it's imposing on the house or taking right. away from. You can just come over here, maybe put on a nice record, put your head, earbuds in and, and get, to, get to work or maybe just enjoy having a quiet moment. I just love this built-in desk. I think it's super functional and it looks great. It doesn't look out of place, like sometimes having an office within a living room, it feels like you just didn't have anywhere else to put it, but this actually looks really nice. Like I would want it there. So the kitchen, we're not really seeing 3D printed elements in this part of the house, but it is beautiful. I personally love this kitchen. But again, like you can't 3D print cabinets, at least yet. And then off the hallway of the living room is a powder room, which again, super cool how you can see that you can put different textures over the concrete and make it feel like a normal house. You would have no idea that there is even the concrete behind it. So it can look like a totally normal house if you want it to. I feel like people do like to add tile and different things in a bathroom in the kitchen. So you don't have to have the concrete design everywhere. Just a little pieces of artwork that we did with the 3D printer to really showcase different flat yes. things that you can do. Um, all sorts of That's different cool. angular design. Then heading down the hallway is the primary bedroom and the largest bathroom in the house. And once again, they've done some really cool curves in the bathroom. In here, they've got plaster over the concrete and the curved wall in the shower that allows space for a bathtub as well. And it just is a really cool design element and makes it interesting, makes it feel really high end. And you can see here where the concrete meets the plaster, but it just, it looks nice. This bedroom feels pretty similar to the first bedroom, but there's a few more windows. This room has probably the most exposed concrete of any room in the house. One of the things that we really tried to do in this grand room was make sure that the space was about the space that you're going to use every day. Um, so we borrowed some European design to really optimize using as little space as possible, but gaining as much storage as possible. So we thought that was pretty fun. So I personally think the concrete looks really cool in here, but comment down below. I'm curious to know what you guys think. And I think one of the coolest things about this space uh, is the private little coffee nooks. So outside this house, you've got a fun little kind of, we call it like a, just a coffee nook, a little breakfast area that kind of lives right here between um, the grand room and the 350 square foot ADU. Now let's take a look inside the casita. They actually build these on their own as well so you can get one for your backyard. So I don't know about you, but this is my favorite space in the entire house. 350 square feet, uh, and again, we kind of borrowed from that European model. So we've got uh, this bed here that's actually a Murphy bed that kind of gently folds itself right back on into the wall. I love that they added a Murphy bed in here, so this could be a guest room and an office, but it's really modern. The concrete looks great in here. I feel like anyone would love to have this in their backyard. I mean, it's got all the, the different things that you would need for a lived-in space, right? We've got um, a, a little burner top. You've got your dishwasher. Um, you've got a fully functional sink and, and refrigerator. Uh, and then you've got a fully functional bathroom, which I think is super cool. And this bathroom is just so rad. It was a little tough to get a shot of this one, but it had that same plaster curves and a frosted glass window, same style as the other ones, which I love. So that is Icon's House Zero. What do you guys think? Would you live in a 3D printed house? I think it's really cool because it's a step towards making the home building process more efficient and thus less expensive. And Icon's next step is building 100 3D printed homes in Austin. So I hope you guys enjoyed learning about these unique houses and I will see you in my next video. Bye.